Hi there, and welcome to this video, Running Containers. A great way of getting experience in Docker is by just getting hands-on. So in this video, we're gonna be covering different ways that you can actually run containers. We'll start off by validating our Docker version and configuration. We'll make use of the Funbox container image that we pulled in the previous lesson from Docker Hub. We'll take a look at the Docker help syntax and we'll see how to use Docker run to effectively run containers. So let's head to our terminal or command prompt and we're gonna start by running Docker version. Docker uses a client server architecture and therefore we could technically have the Docker client and server running independently. In the case of Docker desktop, we are running both the client and the server. The container engine which Docker is using is Containerd, which I've mentioned previously, but I highlight again with this being a KCNA study topic. Containerd was donated by Docker to the CNCF and is now a graduated project. We can also see RunC, which is the reference implementation of a container runtime. And again, Docker donated this to the OCI, the Open Container Initiative. Okay, so let's run some containers. We're gonna use the Funbox container image that we downloaded in the last video. If you missed that, or if you've deleted the image, you can just run docker pull wernite slash Funbox. Going back to the Funbox example, the readme for this container gives us some guidance on how we can actually run this. So bringing down this command, we have docker, which is the executable. Then we have the first parameter of run. Using the Docker CLI, we could, if we like, see all of the parameters that are available to Docker by running docker dash dash help. We can also dig further into the specific run options by using dash dash help against a command line parameter. So for example, we'll add dash dash help to the run option. The Funbox example specifies docker run then dash I for interactive and T for a terminal. It also specifies dash dash RM to automatically remove the container when it exits. If we follow the example that's been given, when the container runs, it's gonna generate and give that container a random name. The container will run and when it exits, dash dash RM will automatically clean up and remove the container. For now, we're gonna leave off the dash dash rm option so that we can actually see what happens in the background. And with this run in, you can now see this menu system. If you're on a Mac with an ARM processor, you may see a warning like I'm seeing here. Essentially, it's looking for an ARM based image, it cannot find one, and instead, it's running an AMD image using emulation. And if you see this menu in this error, you can safely ignore this. With the menu system, we can try out various different options. For example, let's try option six, Nyan cat. And there we go, we have this beautiful animated terminal cat on our screen. We'll just control C that for now. The main thing to note is how easy that was. The ability to run software quickly and easily with everything we actually needed bundled as an image. Now recall, we removed the dash dash RM option. So let's take a look at what containers we have on our system. If we do a Docker PS to list containers, we don't actually see anything. However, if we add dash A to show all containers, we can see the container that we ran in an exited state. In the output, we can see the command that it was running. So slash menu dot sh and I want you to remember this for now. This is the default command in this container image. On the left hand side, we can see the container ID and on the right hand side, we have a random name that was generated for the container. And this will be completely different on your system. Sometimes we'll wanna run containers without the dash dash RM option so that we can interact or reuse them later on. In this case, however, I just wanna remove this after it's completed its execution. So firstly, let's clean these up with Docker RM and you can actually use the container ID or the container name. And if we check again, 
these have now gone. And we'll retry that command again, but this time with the dash dash rm option. You'll see that when this exits, it's going to clean up the old container. So this time we'll try number 10, which is train passing by, and this will exit itself when it finishes. Because we had the dash dash rm option, there's no container left behind. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the other options. We saw earlier that Fumbox is using the default command of slash menu dot sh. We can override this on the command line by specifying our own command. So for example, we could specify NyanCat. And once again, there's our beautiful animated cat. We'll just control C that again. And all this really is is a command, a binary that's being run inside the container. So for example, we could give it the command of bash to run a bash shell. So something to bring your attention to here is the user ID of John. If we go back to the image layers, you can actually see that one of the layers is specifying this user parameter, which is actually a good practice. Ideally, you wanna run containers as non-root users. Now, technically, we could now run some of the menu options ourselves. So being a huge fan of the matrix, we'll run C matrix. And this is gonna be something we'll look forward to in an upcoming video. So we're gonna dive into this bit a little bit further. We could also run Nyancat ourselves. And lastly, what we'll do is we'll just run ASCII Aquarium to turn our terminal into a beautiful aquarium. So these examples give us a great understanding and overview of containers and how we can actually use them and interact with them. In the next video, we'll explore this even further with networking and volumes, making use of the Nginx container image. Thank you for your time with this and I'll see you in the next video.